Hi everyone, my name is David Meister, and today I wanted to talk about reviewing stack traces that are returned from Power Center. So, uh, our agenda today is to first talk about what is a core file and how do we use it for troubleshooting. The second is to talk about the structure of the stack trace, and the third is what to collect for troubleshooting in the event that, that you run into one of these guys. So the first thing is, what is a core file and how do we use it for troubleshooting? A core file is a binary file that is created on Unix and Linux servers when a process encounters a fatal exception. The core file will provide the functions that were holding memory open at the time of the failure. Um, but it's a binary file, so it's not human readable, which means that we have to run it through a debugger in order to get something meaningful out of it. So on Solaris and Linux, there's a debugger called GDB. On AIX, there's one called DBX. Uh, most distributions include a tool called PStack, and we can run in here we can see that we have pstack space core and then redirect to pstack.out and that pstack.out text file will have the details of the stack that were that were retrieved from the core file. Um, additionally, Informatica provides a tool called pmstack that will retrieve stack traces that were written from Informatica pro from Informatica processes. Um, from 951 and above, it is that is available in the InfoHome Tools Debug Tools directory. And then if you don't have that, if you don't happen to have that version or above, you can go into debugging tools on my.informatica.com and we'll just head over there really quickly right now. And we can go here is my.informatica.com and then we go down to debugging tools and we can see um, not only that there's a lot of other little little guys in here that are helpful, but we go down here and here's PM stack. And so we can see here's our README and we can see that you'll run you would run PM stack and if you're not using GDB you would say dash D and it would that and then specify DBX. GDB is the default. So if you're on Solaris or Red Hat or, or SUSE Linux, you don't really need to worry about that one. Um, if, the, if your core file has a name other than C-O-R-E, you would use dash C, and then that would tell, then that would provide, say, core underscore, and then whatever the date or the process ID or whatever is the name of the file. So, um, so uh, PM stack's pretty easy to use. And so, um, it's easy to use, it's easy to download, and additionally, just for your own edification, under debugging tools, there's, there's, there may be some other things there to make your life easier, and it's worth some time to kind of poke around. So, um, in order to have a core file be written, you need to have, you need to have um, ulimit set for that. Um, here we can see that core dump is set to unlimited, and this came from this came from a Solaris box. By default on Linux, core file the core file size is set to zero. So even if Info wants to throw a core file, it can't. And so I would I would recommend that anybody who who might want to use a, a core file for debugging set that to unlimited. So. Um, what we will do now is look at a look at a trace. Uh, we'll look at a couple of traces actually, and we'll we'll kind of go over some of the an overview of what we're looking for in a stack trace. Um, we won't go into every single possible permutation of what might throw a core file or every single scenario in in which. Um, we might be able to, to search through the stack and figure out what's going on because that would be a, a, a manual on it in and of itself. So first thing we will do is go to, um, we'll go here to this, um, this is from a failure on PM rep agent. And in this particular instance, um, we were, we could see, uh, we go down to the bottom and this is one of many threads that were in the stack trace, um, and so in each case we start we start with the thread that has the we start with a thread that has the asterisk, and then we start at the bottom and we work our way up to, we work our way up to the top, and then when we see that there's an abort and or uh, um, an assert handler that is called, that's when the that's when the crash occurs. And 
So in this case, we can see, um, we know that this happened to come from PM Rep Agent, which is the for the repository service. And as we get up towards the top, we can see that um, that there's a that here we have an Informatica library. This is another Informatica library, and this is this one looks like it's this is calling uh, libpmdb2. So it looks like we're heading into this has something to do with the db2 client. We see that again here, and we can see the function calls that are that are being called at the time of the failure. Now here, this is not in Informatica. This is actually in the db2 client. And then after, then soon thereafter, we could see that uh, we have a signal handler called, and then we have the abort process. And so that was the that. So we could see that that in this particular case, the failure was in DB2. And um, at the time of the at the time of this failure, we went um, we, I, the customer went to DB to IBM support, and they were able to to uh, get an. A, a resolution that was outside of Power Center, but I, I chose this example because this is this is um, a pretty clear delimiter. Be, um, this is a pretty clear identifier of, of where the of the point of failure. Um, here's another here's another example. Um, so in from the top of the stack trace, we can this is what the the top of the stack trace it looks like, and I've I've kind of trim this down because partly because it it had some information about um, this came from an actual customer and it had some information that was identifiable and so I've I've trimmed out some of that stuff for um, so that that so there's nothing in there that that will identify this for this particular customer so here we can see this right here invoked that's the time that PM stack was called on the core file on November 7th, 11.05 a.m. And then here, this is the information about the core file. And we can see that um, it was by it was owned by a company, a uh, user called InfoUser, and that the crash occurred at this time. And that furthermore, we can see that that the process that failed was PMDTM. We know that PMDTM is from a session, so that tells us that there was probably a session that there was a session log at the time of the failure, written at the time of the failure. So again, starting from the bottom of the starting from the bottom of the of the stack for this particular this particular thread, we work up towards the we work up from the bottom, and we can see um, again we have some. Uh, um, we have some some DB2 stuff, and here it looks like we're doing some kind of there's some kind of conversion happening in in DB2, and then so soon thereafter we get the D the assert handler and the abort process, and so that that was the last thing it was doing at the time, but as I mentioned previously we had a we had a session log. we know it came from a session so therefore there was a session log. At least in in most instances, in this case there was. Now here I've trimmed out the the bottom of the session log, and we can see there's a we have a lookup transformation here. We have another. We have a, we have, this is also part of the non-cache lookup transformation. Now we have a we have a sorter, and in, at the beginning of the sorter transformation, at this at about the same time, because remember up here. Nine, on November 7th, 923 a.m., that was the last modification date for the score file. Now here, November, November 7th, Wednesday, November 7th, at 923 a.m., we can see that we had, we, had the, uh, we had the abort. And here, we can see that there was an unexpected condition at the time of the failure in this particular ST, STMT column at line eight, 8 through 7. So that's so then from there we can start looking in the knowledge base for that unexpected condition and we can also start looking for this guy in the knowledge base. So let's head back to our presentation and um, so when we have now when we get a when we get a core file some of the stuff we can we can look at is we can tell um, just from in this case we have a, a file named core C-O-R-E and if we run file space core, 
it will tell us the name of the process that created it. This, uh, this particular instance came from an HP UX Itanium server, and we can see that it came from PM Rep Agent. Now, if you get one of these, if you get one of these core files um, that comes from PM Server, that came from the integration service. PM Rep Agent, that came from the repository service. PM DTM, that came from a session. So if you get the if you happen to get a core file, get the get the corresponding logs from the from the process that died. And we want to make sure that the timestamps match so that we can so that we can kind of kind of uh, pin them all together that way. If something happened at um, 555 on May 7th, we would expect to see in the domain file in the domain log, we may see an entry uh, integration service repository service if there was a session log and maybe a workflow log. Have a look at those guys for the for the corresponding activity that was happening at the time of the failure. Um, so also I have I have noted here get the domain log as well. Sometimes the domain log has parts of a stack. Sometimes the domain log will have an unexpected condition. The domain log is near almost always has something helpful. And even if it doesn't, then you know it's a two minute pr two minute exercise, and getting the domain log is still is still usually a really good idea. And then I'll obviously we'll get the we'll get the stack trace using PM stack. So what we've discussed, we've discussed the core file and and the requirements for, for Informatica to write a core file. We've talked about the structure of the stack trace. We've talked about about the um, getting a trace with a debugger and preferably with PM stack, but if you want to use P stack or or figure out how to use DBX or DDB outside of this stuff because you're a glutton for punishment, that's fine. Um, get the log from the failing service and, and a session log if, if applicable, and also get a, get a domain log. And then once you have, once you, you start to get it, have some kind of guess about maybe where the, where the failure occurred, then hit the knowledge base. And if you still have, if you still have questions or concerns, then by all means open a service request and we'll be happy to help. So thank you very much for your time. If you have any, if you have any concerns or any commentary, by all means, let us know. And thank you very much.